This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV outside the old you'll call Bethnal Good Green. Settings in the East End of London on a Friday night. Crikey, Joe, you do take From Wembley the... Stadium it's to your call. Well, we were in the showers at Wembley last week, so it weren't much better. Um, no, listen, what a, what a night. Uh, your call always delivers that Friday night atmosphere live on Channel 5. Um, Charlie Edwards. Fantastic performance. A very, very awkward opponent. Very awkward opponent. Um, you signed him in January, right? Yeah. This well, is what you'd hope for. This is yeah, exactly we can, what we'd hope we can, for. We can sign off for the year now, European Championship, and we'll crack it on Monday with, our, with that world title challenge. Uh, so, obviously, Japan's the place. I get on very well with uh, Mr. Honda. Uh, Gideon Nui versus Don Air, still one of the greatest fights, I think, of all time. Definitely the greatest fight that ever take place in Asia. It was uh, all you, World Boxing Super yeah, Series. Well, no, it wasn't all me. No, 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 no. no. I'm a little up more humble than that. Um, but, uh, but we work very well over there. We take some great shows over there, so that's the place to be picking up world titles now in, at, at, at Charlie's weight, so very excited. Uh, Tom Welland, I'll just big mention at Tom Welland, one of our young guns. Uh, fan- him and Dan Tarwood, surely. I was, I was getting on to him, thank you for, for bringing in tech. Those are the, the, the two that, let's say, uh, the years so far that have come out for me is the ones I see, and hopefully, there's going to be more and others that are pushing for that, that mantle of the top young gun. But those, those two are definitely the ones to keep your eye on. And if you haven't seen that knockout tonight, uh, watch, uh, watch Tom Welland stop his man. Because that's a, that was a tough customer um, so early in his career. Well done. There's a few boys on the card tonight that aren't actually Simon Watson, but performed unbelievably. Two come to mind, Brandon Albrecht and Joel Bartel. Um, both, both, unbelievable. Both, both very, very good. Um, I've watched them before. Uh, Bartel, obviously, also uh, he's out, obviously, at the Tibbs gym, um, who I've got a lot of time for. Very, very, very good trainer. Um, I thought Jermaine Brown was good as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a really, really enjoyable card. So, in other words, get your checkbook out. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I hope, well, don't talk to me about that. No, no, no. I'm in a good mood now. Um, no, Monday morning, I'll deal with that. Josh Kelly. Right, I know, I know we've had our banter about that Liam Smith fight, but Ishmael Davis comes in on six days' notice, a change in styles, and he he, he done what Josh Kelly done. Yeah, and, and listen, you know, um, I think, you know, for us it was uh, it was a fight we had to take that spot. Um, it was a tough fight, but Josh had no issues in taking that, and uh, it was it was a really. I thought it was an entertaining fight to watch. It was a, it was a real clash of styles. Um, all credit to Ishmael Davis, very strong physical. Uh, I think boxing skill-wise um, was another level to Josh, and uh, you just saw saw the, saw the class there. Um, you know, I think Ishmael Davis also has a big future, but for us on the Josh Kelly train, it's now onwards and upwards. Uh, you know, and I've said the names before, whether it's you know. Conor Ben, Chris Eubank Jr., uh, Hamza Shiraz, uh, or or, or at 154, Terence Crawford, we're number one. Um, So, mandatory challenge coming soon as well. So, so it's a very interesting time. You ruling out the Liam Smith fight? Uh, No, not not at all. You know, that's something that, that, you know, I, 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 I listen. I, there's no denying. I love. I love that fight because I try to make that fight. Great fight. Um, great and then, luckily, uh, luckily, you know, Riyadh season came along and and, and, and and produced that fight. Unfortunately, you know, these things happen in, in the sport of boxing. It's uh, it's not a team sport. You know, when a man falls out, man falls out. So, you know, maybe does it happen in the future? We'll see. A couple quick ones. Where does Lyndon Arthur lay? Because. From what we was hearing, it was the Dan Aziz fight, and now does Dan Aziz is fighting Louis Evanson. Yeah, we, we, we've been trying to do that uh, a long time. Um, dates kept changing. Um, no, I'm not pointing any fingers, just saying dates kept changing. Uh, so he waited a long time, then he you know, went off on holiday because he was told the date was changed. Then, then there was a date that was, uh, let's say, unsuitably short notice suddenly. Um, he wasn't even in camp yet. Um, so it's not like he's going to wait to, you know, he's not going to stay in camp until the other side is ready. So we're looking at a few 
interesting options for the end of this year, uh, beginning of next, and you know we'll we'll move on. Right, everyone's seen it, Chris Eubank Jr. I don't need to even kind of relay the words that have been I, spoken I about you tonight. See it? You I'm, would. Well, you know, I've, I've been busy, so I've had a very busy week uh, traveling around Europe. Uh, so, I, yeah, no, I have seen it. Of course, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah of course. What did you make of it then, Gala? I'm, listen, I've, I've been too long in this game to be uh, shocked, offended or anything else. I mean, I wasn't at the press conference, so, you know, I guess I can't, I can't, uh, well, I can't say he said it in my presence. I don't know. I, it was, it is what it is, you know. He, he said what he said, he's retracted it, he's apologised, but he said what he said. So, yeah, it's what it is, I guess. I guess I'll... Uh, I won't look at myself in the mirror any differently. I've heard it before. Um, you know, I, I listen. I, I've, I'm blessed, truly blessed. Three decades in this sport. I come out of a, a long boxing family history, um, and I can look around the world. I can look. To, I can just start in Asia. I, I, why don't you ask Inui what he thinks of me as a promoter? What I did for Anui. Why don't you ask Donair what, I, what he thinks? So let's move from Asia, let's go to Eastern Europe. Why don't we ask Alexander Povetkin, who I signed from the Olympics? Let's ask Alexander Usyk what he thinks of me as a promoter. I'm talking elite level fighters here. Uh, let's go to Germany, let's talk, I don't know, Arthur Abraham, three time world champion. We've got a bit called Kessler, four time world champion, or five time world champion, can't remember. Myris Breedis, we can ask him. Uh, we could go to the UK. Why don't we go to the UK and why don't we ask uh, David Hay what I did for him uh, as heavyweight world champion. Why don't we ask George Groves? Uh, well, did he call me a scumbag? No. Uh, also world champion. Funny, that, they're all world champions. And then, the, and then we could go to America. We'd, why don't you ask Evander Holyfield what Callis Fallon did for him? I mean, uh, Steve Cunningham, great cruiserweight, unified champion twice. Uh, you know, you could do a little world tour. That's the, the funny thing with me. I'm not really just a UK promoter. I've been everywhere. I'm like an old dog, right? So why don't you go around the world and ask these people who, well, they think of me as a promoter, and then you can get a general knowledge information whether I'm an all right promoter or I'm not bad, or I'm a scumbag. Simple as that. Right, last one. That was a long-winded answer, but I think it's a good one, though. I think it's a good one. A lot of references in there. I hope they all back me up. Oh, I didn't go to Scotland, Josh. You didn't go to Josh Taylor as well. I asked Josh Taylor. We had some good nights at the World Boxing Super Series and beyond. They were unbelievable. We've been around other countries. Ita Italy, I got a couple of world champions. South Africa, a few others as well. But I'm not going to get, I don't want to get, I don't want to go over the top here. Last one. Are you a fan of the Formula One? The Formula One? <clears throat> yeah. Where's this going? No, no, no. Yes, I like a bit of Formula One. Formula One in the Middle East? A Formula One in the Middle East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Abu Dhabi, I've been there once. Doha, Saudi, Bahrain. Which one? One that's not there. One that's not, one that's not in those list of countries you just named. I'm trying to think where you're getting to with this. Help me, help me, brother, help me. I'm here and we'll help you on Thursday next week. Ah, next, uh, Thursday next week. Um, look, uh, there's, a, there's an interesting press conference next week. Say no more. I've never known a press conference to be like this next week. Uh, well, you've been to a few of our fun, fun surprise press conferences before. It's going to be fun. Oh, it's going to be fun. Callis Allen, thank you very much for being to IFL TV. I look forward to next week and a late date in November, maybe. 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 <laughs>